No, just when you thought the accolade couldn't get any worse, now the actress is running defense, writing her own music, and uh, it just, I, I, we're gonna take a look at this. Okay, we're, this is coming from That Park Place. Star Wars, the accolade actress Amanda Stinberg claims to be a victim of racism, releases cringe song on June 13th to virtual signal. What the hell is June 13th? Or June thing, uh, what is this? I, I believe this is an American thing. I'm up here in Canada. This is not something I usually do deal with. Uh, what what exactly is this? Oh dear God, what am I witnessing here? Celebrate freedom, aren't those like, what? aren't those colors from Jamaica or something like that? June 13th official, th June theme, National Independence Day is a federal holiday in the United States. It's a celebration or it is celebrated annually on the 19th to celebrate the ending of slavery in, uh, in the United States. Okay, so it ended back in, what was it, 18, 1800, 1865, June 19th, 1865, when General Gordon Granger ordered the final enforcement. Um, isn't this stuff with Lincoln and stuff like that? Like, I don't follow too much of the American history because I'm up here in Canada. Yes, things did happen and I'm glad the, uh, the slavery was ended, but we're still, so th she makes a song in effort of this. Okay. So the actress Amanda Steinberg, who plays Osha and May in Star Wars, the accolade claimed to be the victim of racism and released a cringe song on June 13th. June 13th? I, I don't even know how you say this. In an attempt to maximize the virtue signal. This is something that's new. It's never, like, is there a date this was created? Uh, it was recognized as a federal holiday in 2021 under Joe Biden, of course, of course. So this is something under the current administration in the United States. Um, nearly four minute song on Instagram uh, account writing, happy Juneteenth uh, to those that were flooding me with intolerable racism since I took 72 hours on my laptop to make this song. You got 72 hours to respond. I expect Cheerio. This song begins with Steinberg uh, gyrating as the term discourse blinks rapidly above her head. Yeah, um, I know Asmon has put up a clip of this uh, because it got put to his subreddit and you just, uh, I'm not gonna play it. There's the discourse of it uh, and she's doing what she's doing, gyrating away. Um, this has taken another turn though because now it's being copyright claimed. Star Wars, the accolade uh, actress Ste uh, Amandala Steinberg begins copyright claiming YouTubers reacting to her cringe victimhood video. So if you're going to react to her video, you're going to pay the revenue to react to it. And this is part of the issue with react style content, why I don't do a lot of it, uh, because it does have this situation where if you're going to make any money, the pennies that we already make on YouTube, literally pennies, um, get claimed and then it's all gone. And then what's the point in making the video? And this is why a lot of people react to things in the video game space because video games are open and usually not claimed like this. Um, so she's claimed it and what is it down here yeah it was this video here that originally was posted to instagram so what would have happened here is they also would have taken this and posted it to youtube i don't know if it's public on youtube um and then they could have it unlisted and youtube will automatically go into the content id system and allow you to claim these so if it shows up and you can see here stuttering clinton craig official holy crap she is literally claiming copyright on people reacting to her song. You have to be kidding me. And it's ineligible. They are literally just taking the ad revenue 
for these videos. And that's why we're not going to play it here. Of course, it's a Gundam saw this coming, Smash GT. I guess they could say she is oppressing people while uh, she's taking the money as if uh, as if she's owed the money for it. Uh, it's a song, easier to do this, fight it. So everyone's telling them to fight it. Um, this is this is part of uh, what it is. You could go through and mute it all. It looks like it was during a live stream uh, because it's from 56 minutes, 46 seconds to 57 minutes, 33 seconds in whatever video this was from. Um, and it, this was a report to, um, to end wokeness uh, Twitter account, which they deleted that post. So I don't even know what that post was. So, I mean, it, it, it's a troll in itself to sit there and claim the ad revenue on this. Does she even have an account that has uh, that is monetized? I guess it's at that point. Um, I thought she was oppressed. Why is she oppressing you? Uh, so everyone's saying that she's oppressing people. Yeah, it's a little bit far, but it, it, she's trolling. She's taking all the ad revenue and she's she's looking to get paid on all of this for the accolade because obviously the show is not doing as well as they wanted it to. So the racism that's out there, I guess is just the critics giving, or the audience giving this show a 14% at this point. It's been slowly going down and after episode three, this thing plummeted even further down. But apparently it's racism if you dislike the show. This is what we've been talking about. This is, the situation, they make a crap show nobody wants, nobody cares, they take an IP and completely rewrite the script, rewrite the narrative of the IP, and it's no longer the samurai battle in space where Jedi, where it's a Jedi soap opera or Jedi opera, it's now a whatever this is, where you've got witches in a coven using the force to suddenly create life that was something that was beyond everyone in Star Wars of the past. And now this is where it's gone. And apparently it's intolerable racism, which they point out in this article that it doesn't, they don't even show where the racism actually is. You know, it's not just Rotten Tomatoes, it's also IMBD, where it's gotten 57% uh, dislike, 33K people sitting there saying, no, this show is garbage. A lot of people have lit it up. It's very strange though, that <laughs> this is a very strange part of things. Um, the video unavailable, I'll show you a screenshot of it. Um, the uploader has made this video un unavailable in your country, or it's not, I can't witness it here because I'm up in Canada. And I've run into this a few times where for some reason, a video will not be allowed to be showed here in Canada because the uploader has said, no, Canadians are not allowed to watch this. They're, they, they just can't. And sometimes, um, in particular, it happens to be because they have a contract uh, with Canada through CanCon laws, so these episodes don't make them up here. There's a lot of things that we do miss as Canadians uh, without a VPN to be able to see these things, and this is just regular everyday stuff. But this video in particular is a Trevor Noah video uh, with uh, Steinberg in it um, back about five years ago. This is when she talked about how they're trying to uh, make white people uh, get very upset over shows that they're making. Um, it's kind of weird that this is not available in Canada. Well, I mean, white people crying actually was the goal. Well, I've already seen the clip on Twitter through clips and everything else and other videos. So it's strange that this one video on The Daily Show is not available to be shown. I wonder why that really is. And this goes even further. Uh, there was a post that came out from Looper talking about how Nerd Roddick and the Critical Drinker apparently brought in hatred and bigotry and racism into the conversation. Very dark here with it. Uh, corporate shills at it again. They're trying to blame fans and YouTubers like Critical Drinker and Nerd Roddick for the destruction of beloved IPs for simply calling out their awful decisions. They're trying to run cover for the Overlord Disney and the especially failing in the words of the great doctor, I can say that the, uh, this about Disney and and Star Wars, he's dead Jim. I'm in the legitimate criticisms the acolyte has received. Cultural critics like the critical drinker and nerd Roddick have dubbed the show lore breaking for its recent revelations, but their commentary isn't productive. Rather, it encourages bigotry and hatred over a show that's just getting started. 
having being critics of a show now promotes bigotry and hatred. This is where this is par for the course right now. You have you put out a piece of crap content and then you call everyone that dislikes it, all the critics, all the audience, because it's got a 14% rating. Um, they're all wrong. They're completely wrong in this narrative, and it's absolutely BS. No, people don't want to see this type of thing. The critics love it because it checks all their marks, checks all their boxes, but then they don't critically analyze what's going on with the show and how a beloved IP has been flipped and has had its script flipped upside down into something that it generally was not and breaks the lore of everything. And this is why we're at where we are today. With all the stuff going on with the accolade and in video games and, and many other fandoms right now, it's really disappointing to see that companies like Disney will take anything out there and just put it out there and say, we're going to make money. We're going to get all this money up front and then we're going to put out the worst product pro possible and no one's going to like it anymore. And then I, I guess it goes to the lowest bidder at that point. It drives everyone away from these uh, companies. It drives, keeps the wages for this down as well for everyone that's on the set. And where does it go at the end? What does this actually do at the end? Does it promote something that's healthy for humanity to sit there or does it just give us a distraction overall this is where the entertainment industry is now is to promote these types of things and then everyone doesn't want it anymore you know recently i was talking to someone about hasbro how they've completely fallen off the grid because everything that they do nobody really gives two craps about and this is the road star wars is now headed no one's going to care about this uh, franchise anymore and everyone's just going to give up on it. And when that happens, no one's going to talk about it anymore. Right now, people are trying to talk about it in hopes that it turns around. But I think those days are numbered and I think Star Wars is dead. Anyway, I'm your Progeny in Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I'm signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again very soon.